Good evening. Good evening and welcome to the AUC Parents Orientation. My name is George Marquis. I'm the Dean of Students. We have a very informative and interesting program for you, which we hope you enjoy and benefit from, with our panel of experts whom I will introduce after remarks from members of the senior administration. The program is being recorded and will be available on the AUC website with links from the Parents Association website and the Dean of Students websites. At this time, it is my great pleasure to invite to the podium the president of AUC, Francis Ricciardoni. Thank you, Dean Markey. Thank you, all the parents, for coming and joining us this evening. I know your lives are busy. Uh, you're, many of you live all over Cairo. You've faced Cairo evening traffic to come here. Uh, you come here out of your love for your, your students and the excitement we all feel at this start of uh, their journeys with us. I also want to thank uh, Dean Markey, uh, Vice President Dina Borai, all, the, all of our caregivers, our leaders of our administration and faculty, our caregivers who are here, because really that's one of the things that makes AUC very special, the, the concentration on the student as our focus and the care that we give to her or his well-being and development throughout uh, his or her uh, uh, tenure with us. I also want to thank the Parents Association and Dr. Maha Nasser, who uh, has been in this leadership capacity for all of my tenure here, president the past two years, and uh, really represents another special thing about AUC. The Parents Association we see as a, a really important channel of communications. Of course, um, we listen to our students, certainly our faculty and staff, um, but we want the parents uh, as a body and as well as individually to be able to uh, give us feedback. Let us know where you see opportunities to do things better, where you see any gaps, any, any failures to perform. This is a huge investment that, first of all, your sons and daughters are making in themselves with their time and their energy and their discipline and their dedication. It's a huge investment for all of our families. Um, uh, there are very few of our families here who uh, find it easy to afford our uh, costs. We are the highest in Egypt, we know that. Um, but we also uh, strive to be not just the best in Egypt, no matter how you define the best, but to be the best by world standards. And this past year, we just had our biggest success of the past year. We had uh, the final visit of a 10-year cycle of an accreditation process by the Middle States uh, Council on Higher Education in the United States. They looked inside and out over those period of 10 years, the last three years very deeply with multiple visits, a large delegation, and they proclaimed us a fine university, meeting all the standards for accreditation in the United States. Um, without any requirements to change. Recommendations which, uh, for things that we were doing in any case. We're very proud of that. Let me just say um, a word uh, or two about this card that you'll find there. For those who have been here before, you, you've heard me say this many times, but it really does define in one little handy card what makes us special. And this year's card, which is a little different, uh, for those who have heard it before, is it has a big 100 on it, and I'll say a couple words about that too. We are a well-established uh, brand and presence in contemporary Egypt. We have grown up, we were born, we were founded, really when the first stirrings of the modern Egyptian state happened in 1919. When we were founded in February of 1919, one month later, Saad Zaghloul led the second national uprising against the British in British colonial history. The Americans were the first uh, a century and a half before that, and the Egyptians followed in 1919. So we have that in common too. I'll come back to that, what that centenary means in just a moment and how we're celebrating it. So this, this card says Egypt's Global University. We were founded uh, really with the thought that we were bringing American standard, American philosophy, American style, American content of education to this country where we sensed there was a demand as this country was stirring to create a new future for itself, to take its place in the then uh, emerging new world order 
following the, the collapse of the Ottoman Empire and the, and the world was turned upside down. Um, right now, what that means is that we are not only uh, a university that aims to bring American style education, American accredited education to Egypt, but also that brings Americans here to learn about Egypt and to bring the study of Arabic and Islamic art and architecture and, uh, and this incredibly layered and rich civilization to the knowledge of the world, particularly to Americans, but to all who study and uh, teach in English. Uh, we, therefore, a big priority for us is to bring the foreigners back to this beautiful, dynamic, challenging country, a country that has its problems, so does the United States of America, so does every country. But too often, in my view, as a foreigner who knows a bit about this country and, and loves it, uh, too often I feel that in Egypt's case, the noise is heard through the international media and the beauty of this country, the richness, the energy, um, the, the imagination and creativity of your sons and daughters, the commitment of, of Egyptians to a, a greater future, that doesn't come through all the international media. So part of our challenge is to bring great faculty uh, and staff and foreign students to experience this country for themselves. That is a priority. And it is a, an area where as uh, the Parents Association knows, I've, I've asked that the parents help. If your son or daughter befriends uh, a young uh, American or Italian or Chinese or someone from an African country or South Asian, um, you know, it'd be lovely if you can help that person come to know your family, uh, you know, where you live, where you go on vacation, even come home for a meal. Those are life-changing experiences, I can tell you, as an American who was a foreign student myself, not here, but, but in Italy. So back to us and, and uh, our philosophy. In one card, this is what we aim to do. It, it makes us really different from the other educational experiences available in Egypt. And truly, I think, throughout the region, with a couple of uh, exceptions of sort of sister universities at AUB and elsewhere. We, uh, our, our mission statement is right here, inspiring explorers. Not telling people things, not lecturing them, but inspiring them, drawing them out giving them a higher, stretching their visions and their ambitions. Uh, explorers, people who are seekers, not people who are there just getting their heads stuffed so they can pass an exam, but explorers, people who are looking to cut their way through an impenetrable jungle of an unpredictable future. So inspiring explorers for lifelong journeys. Do not come here. I hope your sons and daughters did not come here to complete their education. That would be a mistake. This isn't where you end your education. We like to turn people loose on the world as we've done this week. We just had uh, a graduating class of our centennial year. We like to turn people loose on the, on the world who, who have, are even hungrier for knowledge than when they came in, who believe that education is, is what uh, the civilized, cultured person always will seek uh, until the end of life, throughout life, as long as one has the, the health and the means to do it. So inspiring explorers for lifelong journeys of challenge, people who love problems. We ask people, don't tell us what you want to be. Tell us what problems you want to solve. And then let's figure out together how you get the tools to do it. So lifelong journeys of challenge, discovery, innovation, and service. Egypt is famous as a country of great resilience, a country that has, where humankind has learned to defy the uh, powers of change. And yet change is upon us in this world at an accelerating pace. Innovation mastery of innovation, excitement and innovation, embrace of innovation and change is necessary to thrive in today's world. That's what American higher education aims to do, not simply to regurgitate the past and you know, great knowledge of, of, uh, of, of facts and of science, but how to influence, how to engage with the changing world. And finally, service. We like to, uh, all of us who are here, whether as faculty members or as staff, feel we are here in service of something higher than ourselves. And we'd like to, to believe that our students come here with that kind of predisposition from good families who have instilled that value and who wish them to emerge, not just as job seekers. Of course, that's a good thing. We want our students to come out being highly employable, and they do because of all these things. But we want them not only to be employable, we want them to feel they have a mission in life to serve others, to serve their families, their countries, 
their societies. So that's it. That's the statement in a nutshell. It's only you know about a dozen words. Inspiring explorers for lifelong journeys of challenge, discovery, innovation, and service. Then the sort of guiding values are in the back of the card. And they, in the United States, we speak of the four C's of a liberal arts education. Those are critical thinking, not criticism of finding out how the other person is wrong, but asking the penetrating question. We don't expect our students to know all the answers or to memorize the answers or to learn all the answers here, because we don't have all the answers, and no one does now. But we do want them to come up with the best questions. We value the best, most penetrating, most critical questions over pat answers or right answers. So first see critical thinking. Creativity comes from the first. If you have a, this habit of, of, uh, of questioning, of seeking, uh, that leads to creativity, and that will make one employable no matter how the world change, changes in the future, no matter what jobs go away and what new ones come in. Communication is vitally important in any successful uh, human life in today's world. Communication is necessary uh, in English, in fact, which is now the, the global language. Most of our students uh, are native speakers of Arabic. Uh, some come here with uh, less than educated levels of, of English. By the time they leave, they will come out at educated native level speakers of English. And we hope that the non-native speakers of Arabic who come here will come out with at least serviceable Arabic, better than mine, I hope. Um, and, and that means communication will be enabled across cultures and the barriers of language. Finally, collaboration. In terms of solving the complicated problems of today's world, it takes poets and engineers and business people. Uh, it takes physicists and chemists and uh, novelists and theater people and psychologists. We really believe in the cross-disciplinary approach to problem solving and to growing our young people, and you'll hear more discussion about that. You'll see our values listed here as well, passion, it goes along with commitment, responsibility, that feeling that each of us individually and, and us collectively, we are accountable, we are responsible for changing this world and making this a better place. Integrity, um, diversity, valuing of, of differences among people across the world. Finally, standards of real excellence at a world standard of excellence in whatever field we undertake. Those, that's the philosophy. That's it in a nutshell. It's on a card. You don't have to take notes. It's all there. Now, I found a note about this in Tenery. Um, we are a, a, a proven provider of these services. We're not providing the same thing we did 100 years ago, or we wouldn't still be here. We keep evolving and changing to meet the needs of, our, uh, of the people we serve, principally in Egypt and the region, but also those who come here. We will be launching our centenary celebrations next month. Uh, in fact, in about 10 days, <coughs> on Saturday, February 9th, at our old downtown campus. You will be hearing about it. Um, it we expect large demand. There's a ticketing process, so it, it, there's limited availability for that day. Um, there'll be ceremonies at noon. There'll be music all afternoon. Something that will be open to the public, though, is the campus itself. We're reopening the center as our Tahrir Cultural Center in service to our students and faculty and in service to the public. So that, once again, AUC will serve there, and we hope increasingly here in New Cairo as a cultural catalyst for what I choose to believe can be a renaissance in Egypt. If uh, 1919 marked the start of an Egyptian renaissance toward a modern state, this year, 2019, 2020, our young people can be the drivers of a renaissance of this incredible country that we live in. Yes, we know the problems. The economic stresses, the political ones, yes, they're there. But in education, we innovate, we change, we, uh, we produce uh, creative people. At the Tahrir Cultural Center, and we'll be developing our cultural activities here as well, thanks to a gift of Nadeep Sawiris, um, we will be doing art, uh, paintings, that is, sculpture, music, theater, film, and of course, lectures by our wonderful faculty made available to the public, as we do out here in New Cairo. Um, from actually the 6th, we will have open to the public the uh, refurbished campus. Those of you who knew the old one would be amazed to see how beautiful Ewart Hall is, how beautiful the garden is, where on Saturday the night we'll have music, how beautiful the exhibit rooms are. Uh, people are working there tonight and every night until we open the exhibits. 
I just wanted to mention these two special exhibits because they really show who we are as AUC and what we can do in communication with the people of Egypt. We, have, we will have a veteran Egyptian artist who is an AUCN, uh, Hoda Lutfi, taught history here at AUC until a, a couple of decades ago. Then she became an artist, made her living as an artist. She's known around the world, she's exhibited around the world, and she's having her first exhibit back at AUC in 20 years, uh, entitled When Dreams Call for Silence. It's somber, but it's very stimulating and, and uh, enriching. And then we have a young Egyptian-American, an American woman, lives in Los Angeles, born in Luxor, named Shireen Girgis. And in fact, I'm going to have dinner with her and some of the organizers of her show, a working dinner in a little while, so that's why I have to go. Shireen's story is even, even neater in terms of a connection, if that's possible. She has just closed her show in Los Angeles, which is inspired by the life story of Doria Shafi, an Egyptian woman who changed this country uh, 60 years ago, more than 60 years ago, when she began, uh, had a tragic life story, but was a pioneer for the rights, for human rights, for the rights of women. And she led her march on the parliament in Egypt for women's rights in 1951 from Ewart Hall. So the art show, inspired by that, which was in Los Angeles, uh, with some new pieces created especially for this, with the artist Shireen Girgis, an Egyptian-born American returning home for the first time to do a show that's going to be there. So for me, that's all very moving stuff. Those shows will be available throughout February, open to the public. The hours will be published. I don't know what they are. And I invite you to enjoy that if you want to get a feel for where we've come from and where we're going and in our uh, journey and our mission of service to Egypt and to your sons and daughters. Thank you for entrusting your sons and daughters to us. We know that it's a sacrifice. It's a big decision. It's a, a cultural change for most. We're a blend of American and Egyptian culture. We like to think the best of both. And you'll now hear from our amazing caregivers from a variety of disciplines and uh, approaches to take care of your, your students. Thank you very much for giving us a chance. Thank you, President Ricciardoni. I'd now like to invite the provost of uh, AUC, Dr. Ihan Abdelrahman, to the podium. signed two important agreements مع هارفارد ومع كينجز كولج. التو اجريمنتس دول في الاخر دول اخر التو اجريمنتس احنا سايند مع هارفارد وكينجز كولج فور سيوت اكسشينج عشان لو طلبه يجوا من هارفارد يدرسوا في الجامعه الامريكيه وطلبه بتوعنا يروحوا هارفارد يدرسوا هناك فور سيمستر اور تو. من شهر تقريبا اسامه كمال طبعا مزيد معروف استضافني عشان يتكلم معايا عن الجامعه الامريكيه واستضافني عشان يتكلم على الهارفارد اجريمنت وكينجز كولج اجريمنت. بعديها جاني مسج من طالب عندي كان بنت ساعتها من حوالي 10 سنين، كانت بنت معايا ماجستير من حوالي 10 سنين. انا لما رجعت من امريكا مصر ما رجعتش على الجامعه الامريكيه، انا رجعت على جامعه حلوان اختياري وبقوائم القوى العقليه. انا على فكره انا خريج جامعه حلوان فانا كل الحب لجامعه حلوان. بس حقيقي بعد ثلاث شهور في جامعه حلوان انا سالت نفسي السؤال هو ايه اللي انا عملته في نفسي ده؟ وقررت بعد ثلاث شهور ان انا لا انا هبتدي ادور على شغل تاني في الستيتس وراجع تاني الستيتس لان انا انا ماليش مستقبل هنا. وفعلا في الوقت اللي جالي فيه جوب اوفر من جورجيا تاك كان جالي جوب اوفر من الاي يو سي واخترت ان انا اقعد في الاي يو سي فور اوبيس ريزنز لينا كلنا زي ما بقول لايمان مراتي انا كل يوم بسوق عربيتي بروح اشتغل في امريكا وفي اخر اليوم بسوق عربيتي تاني وارجع على مصر وارجع على القاهره مش مفيش احسن كده في الدنيا يعني. الطالب بتاعي اللي كان بيدرس معايا الماجستير بعت لي مسج انا معلش انا هسمعكم هنا بس ثلاث اربع ثواني عشان نعرف ليه انتوا اخترتوا تدخلوا اولادكم في الجامعه الامريكيه. هو اسمه علي هو دلوقتي 
بخلص الدكتوراه بتاعته في هو كان فيزيست وخلص الدكتوراه بتاعته في حاجه قريبه من بين الفيزكس والنيورو ساينس وحقيقه عامل شغل كويس جدا في امريكا ومش غالبا ما هوش راجع مصر يعني بس خليني اسمعك هو قال لي ايه بعد ما سمع الحديث بتاعي ما كنتش سامعك انا شفت طلبه كتير جاي من جامعات حكوميه ممكن يبقوا ممتازين ممكن يقعدوا بوزو زي حاجات يبقى حاجات زي كده بس ممكن يبقوا شطار بس تكنيكال الطالب اللي بيجي من امريكا بيبقى مور في جون حقيقي بيبقى مختلف بيبقى باين على الاختلاف حتى لو الجزء عشان كده احنا بندخل اولادنا حقيقي الجامعه الامريكيه احنا اولاد الاثنين في الجامعه هنا يعني فهم محدش عارف ان هم موجودين في الجامعه ما بيستخدموش الناس اثنين بتوع بتاعي فبالتالي الحمد لله بس واحد يعني هو باختيارهم برضه دخلوا الجامعه علشان هم دوت هو ده التعليم اللي احنا عايزين نقدمه لاولادنا، تعليم انترناشونال لكن في القاهره موجود عندنا في القاهره. انا بحب دايما كواحد بتاع فيزكس يعني انا بدرس فيزكس بحب اشتغل دايما بالارقام، لغه الارقام دي بتريحني بتديني معلومات كتيره جدا. خليني يعني اشير معاكم بعض الارقام كده اللي انا شفتها طلعتها من من الداشبورد بتاع الجامعه في الفتره اللي فاتت قبل ما اشارك لكم ارقام عن الجامعه نفسها خليني اقول لكم اولادكم هم داخلين النهارده بعد ما يخلصوا الشغل بعد ما يخلصوا الجامعه بتاعتهم الدراسه بتاعتهم توقعوا ان هم هيخلص هيغير الكارير بتاعه في فتره حياته على الاقل 15 مره الدراسات بتقول كده فمن احنا ما بنعلموش لكارير معين، احنا بنعلمه عشان يفضل يتعلم طول عمره ويفضل يبقى فلاكسبل مع التغييرات اللي هتحصل في المستقبل. آه خليني اقول لكم كمان ان نص الوظائف اللي موجوده النهارده بعد خمس سنين مش هتبقى موجوده، فبالتالي احنا بنعلم ولادنا النهارده الوظائف احنا مش عارفين هتبقى ايه في المستقبل، لكن احنا لازم نعلمهم ان هو يخلق وظيفه نفسه وغيره في المستقبل، وده اللي الجامعه الامريكيه بتعمله. البريزنت ريتشاردوني قال لكم ان احنا لسه واخدين الاعتماد من امريكا الجامعه بتاعتنا معتمده لمعارضه عديده من امريكا احنا الاعتماد بتاعنا مستمر حوالي 7 8 سنين كمان انا عايز اضيف كمان معلومه احنا الجامعه الوحيده في مصر اللي معتمده بالحكومه المصريه مفيش جامعه ثانيه معتمده في مصر بالحكومه المصريه جهه الاعتماد المصري اسمها نقائي النقائي دي هي جهه الاعتماد اتعملت حوالي 10 15 سنه الجامعة الوحيدة اللي اتقدمت عشان تبقى تعتمد بالاعتماد المصري هو الجامعة الأمريكية في القاهرة. مفيش جامعة تانية موجودة. أحب أتكلم على ولادكم اللي دخلوا معانا السنة دي. السنة دي في إحنا باختيارنا برضه غيرنا الطريقة اللي إحنا بنقفل بيها الطلبة بتوعنا. إحنا بنقفل معظم الطلبة دلوقتي أو كلهم في الفول في سبتمبر. وبنقفل عدد صغير جدا محدود في السبرينج. آه وده احنا قررنا احنا نشفت الادمشن سايكل بتاعتنا في الجامعه عشان نبقى نقدر نبلد بطريقه احسن في الجامعه كمان. خليني اتكلم على الادمشن سايكل اللي احنا الولاد دخلوا فيها دي. احنا جبنا 400 ابلكيشن احنا قابلنا بالظبط 397 ابلكيشن احنا قابلنا منهم 100 طالب. السنه دي في, في السبرينج احنا رفعنا الادمشن كرايتيريا بتاعتنا ب 10% عن الفول اللي فات. احنا بنقبل الطلبه بتوعكم ولادكم حقيقي اول افريج احسن من الطلبه اللي احنا قابلناهم في في السبرينج في الفول اللي فات. عدد الطلبه زي ما كنا بنتكلم دلوقتي عدد الطلبه الاندر جراديوت في الجامعه بتوعنا حوالي 5500 طالب ما عندناش ان احنا نزود عدد الطلبه بالعكس احنا عندنا نيه ان احنا نحافظ على عدد الطلبه بتوعنا عشان نتاكد من جوده التعليم بتاع اللي احنا بنقدمه للطلبه. النهارده كان عندنا كينجز كوليدج بتزورنا تاني وبكره البريزدنت هيحل معاهم اجريمنت جديده علشان ندرب الموظفين الحكوميين قبل ما يروحوا العاصمه الاداريه الجديده بالتعاون مع كينجز كوليدج احنا احنا الجامعه اللي اخترتها كينجز كوليدج عشان نبقى البارتنر بتاعهم في تدريب الموظفين الحكوميين الحكومه راحت لكينجز كوليدج وكينجز كوليدج كانت هنا قالت لنا احنا عايزين عايزينكم تشتغلوا معانا وبكره البريزدنت بتاعنا الساعه 10 الصبح بيصير لنا اجريمنت في بهذا الصدد. انا بقول كينجز كولج وهارفارد ليه احنا احنا عندنا تقريبا 140 اكستشينج اجريمنت مع جامعات في منتهى في مختلف انحاء العالم منهم الصين وهونج كونج اوروبا يونايتد ستيتس احب اتكلم كمان على نسبه عدد الاساتذه بتوعنا الفاكهه بتوعنا اللي احنا حقيقي فخورين بيهم كلهم للطلبه نسبه الاساتذه للطلبه النهارده 1 10 
واحنا بنحاول نحافظ على النسبه دي من المهمه جدا ان احنا نمدين عدد صغير في الكلاس روم بتاعنا عشان نقدر لو حد في حد خريج الجامعه موجود معانا النهارده؟ في حد من خريج الجامعه موجود؟ من الاباء؟ لو انت خريج الجامعه الامريكيه هتبقى عارف ان انا انا وانا لما كنت بدرس ببقى عارف كل طالب بتاعي بالاسم. النهارده لما بسافر اي حته وبلاقي طالب من الجامعه الامريكيه اللي انا درست لهم ببقى عارفه بالاسم، عارف ان انا درست له لان عدد الكلاس اللي انا كنت بدرس فيه 30 طالب بس. بنهاية السمستر ببقى عارفهم بالاسم مش بس كده كمان ببقى عارف كل واحد فيهم بيتعلم ازاي مين منهم فيجوال مين منهم ان انا لا لازم اعيد له المعلومه بطريقه ثانيه عشان يقدر يستوعبها مين اللي انا لازم اقول له لا تعالى الكلاس روم بعد تعالى الاوفيس بتاعي بعد الكلاس عشان نتكلم اكتر شويه ببقى عارفهم كلهم وده الميزه من المميزات اللي بياخدها الطالب بتاعنا بتاعنا عم كده على اي جامعه ثانيه موجوده حتى انترناشونال كلاس روم الصغير ده احب اتكلم كمان على الفاينانشال ايد والسكولر شيبس بتاعت الجامعه احنا تقريبا 50 ل 60% من الطلبه بتاعنا بياخدوا فورم من سكولر شيبس او او مساعده ماليه من الجامعه لو احنا جمعنا الفلوس دي كلها على بعضيها وحاولت نديها بس منح كامله للطلاب بتوعنا هتدي تقريبا 20 ل 25% من الطلبه بتوعنا منح كامله طبعا احنا ما بنعملش كده في جزء بياخد منح كامله وفي جزء من الطلبه بياخد جزء من المنحه عشان يقدر يساعدوا على مصروفات الجامعه خليني كمان اشترك معاكم في رقم تاني الطالب اللي بيدفع المصاريف الكامله للجامعه من غير ما ياخد اي منحه او مساعده ماليه المصاريف دي بتمثل 70% من الكوست بتاعته علينا في الجامعه. الجامعه بتدفع لاي طالب بيدفع المصاريف الكامله 30% من الكوست بتاعته لان احنا الجامعه الوحيده تاني في مصر اللي مش نوت فور بروفيت والنوت فور بروفيت احنا لو حتى لو احنا عندنا سير بلس في اخر السنه الماليه السير بلس ده بيخش تاني عشان يحسن جوده التعليم بتاعنا ويحسن ويحسن الاداء بتاعنا في الجامعه. اخر حاجه النهارده في الفايس تشانسلر بتاع كارنس كوليدج كان بيسالني سؤال عن جوده التعليم في الجامعه الامريكيه وبيقول لي هل انت راضي عن جوده التعليم في الجامعه الامريكيه؟ السؤال بتاعي بصراحه اي حد فينا في الجامعه يوم ما هيبقى راضي عن جوده التعليم في الجامعه الامريكيه يبقى احنا هنا ما احناش عارفين هنعمل ايه، احنا عمرنا ما هنبقى راضيين عن جوده التعليم في الجامعه الامريكيه، ده مش معناه ان جوده التعليم بتاعنا وحش، ده معناه ان احنا لازم كل يوم نصحى الصبح لازم نفكر احنا ازاي نحسن من جوده التعليم بتاعنا في الجامعه الامريكيه وده المشن بتاعتنا في الجامعه الحقيقيه، احنا مصممين ان احنا نقدم انترناشونال اديوكيشن على ارض مصريه وده اللي احنا بنعمله، اخر رقم هقوله 50% من الاساتذه بتوعنا في الجامعه الامريكيه انترناشونال فاكلتي جايين من اوروبا ومن امريكا ومن دول ثانيه وال50 الثانيين اساتذه مصريين بس 100% من الدكاتره بتوعنا خدوا خدوا التعليم بتاعهم يا اما في اوروبا يا اما في امريكا. اتمنى ان رحله ولادكم اللي معانا في الجامعه تبقى موفقه ان شاء الله هتبقى موفقه يور سبورت كمان مهم جدا ان انتم تديوا للطلبه للطلبه بتوعنا ولادنا وولادكم من فضلك ما تضغطش ما تضغطش على ابنك يميجر في حاجه معينه، سيبه هو يختار. الاختيار بتاعه هو احنا مش عارفين احنا بن... احنا بنوضح من شغلانه ايه، سيبه هو يختار عشان يبقى عنده الحريه للاختيار وكمان يبقى عنده الحريه ان هو يكسل في اللي هو بيعمله. متشكر جدا وان شاء الله نلتقي تاني شويه. It's my pleasure now to call to the podium the Vice President for Student Life, Dr. Tina Barnay. Good evening, everyone, and congratulations for your sons and daughters to be with us at AUC. We are very proud that you have um, put your trust in AUC uh, for your um, children. I want to explain my role exactly because student life is maybe an unusual uh, position compared to other universities in Egypt because, believe it or not, at AUC, your sons and daughters will have two lives. I know, a double life. There is the academic life, and this is where um, the provost, Provost Ihab, is um, overseeing the academic with all the quality standards and continuous improvement and lifelong learning. But at the same time, there is what we call the co-curricular life. And I want to be very clear, it is not extracurricular. 
It is co-curricular. It is equal in importance and weight. And I'm going to echo what President Richidoni talked about. The four C's. These are the skills for life, whether they're communication, critical thinking, um, creativity, and other skills, leadership, resilience, negotiation, and I can go on and on. Now, these skills are, in fact, what makes people successful in life. Lots of research, and I, can, uh, I, I have my colleague and dear friend, Mahan Ginti, who's in charge of our career center. You know what employers look for? Employers do not look at the GPA or the grade on, on, your, on your son's or daughter's um, uh, bachelor degree. They look in the interview for those skills. And this is what will make this, uh, and may help your son or daughter achieve success. So we, in student life, we take care of the co-curricular life. We have a fabulous dean of students, Dr. George Marquis, and he takes care of the student well-being, student success, and with him there is the director, and she will talk about the center for well-being, where if your son and daughter needs support from us, coaching and counseling and in mentoring, he will find it with us. If there are any issues with, it, with a student, the Dean of Students is there to help and support. Also in student life, we have our fabulous Office of Student Life, OSL. Now with the director, um, Amal Salah, she and her team, they are responsible for, it is fun, student activities, and we have the student governance, which is the student union, the student senate, and the student court. But this is where they master the skills in real situations. These are the life skills that we're talking about, where they are allowed to do all, and they are required. I hope you will support us. And don't worry, if you find your son and daughter busy with activities, and then you start worrying, when is he studying? Finger Muzakra. It's a balance. We will teach them and help them in time management. And it is just remember, it is very important that they do both. Because life is no longer um, as it was. Change is very important, and Egypt is going through tremendous change. I also want to talk about the third very important office in student life, which is athletics. And again, you will hear from Coach Bob Yasso. And this is part of the holistic education that we provide at AUC. It is not just about the mind, it's also about a healthy lifestyle, a healthy body that will develop your sons and daughters. Very important. And last but not least, within student life, we have what we call residential life or the dormitories, the dorms. Now, we have a, a lot of um, students, I don't know if any of your sons and daughters are in the dorms, yes, welcome. Our dorms, we're not, we don't run a hotel, it is not a hotel only. There is a beautiful journey and experience within the dorms where we teach students to be independent, to be responsible, they, they, uh, your, our students will have to take care of themselves, cleaning the room at least, because this is part of education that when they leave AUC, they will be responsible and be able to be independent and very, very clever and smart um, uh, uh, human beings and citizens of Egypt and global citizens of the world. Uh, and another comment I want to make, a lot of you, I have talked with uh, some of you and s several of you have told me that my, my son or my daughter is going into engineering, going into computer science, the philosophy, as Provost Ihab Abdurrahman has explained, it is, and as President Richidoni said, it's about passion. I, and I'll give you an example. My son entered computer science. He ended up in actuarial science because he, he, he was 18 when he made that decision. But a year later, he, made, he changed his mind when he found out, well, what he loved and what he liked most was mathematics, not necessarily computer science. And this is the exposure that I hope that you as mothers and fathers, you will support your uh, son and daughter to explore different possi possibilities. The jobs that are available now, as Provost Tihab said, may not be available in the next few years. Data science. This is a new field. This is where the artificial intelligence, this is where um, the world is going. And so th these are the things I hope that you will keep in mind 
support your son and daughter in their decisions, even though it may not be um, it, the traditional way of education that we in Egypt are used to. But believe me, when they leave AUC, they will be fabulous global citizens. And welcome again, and if you need anything, it will be myself, Dean Marquis, and of course everyone else at your service to support your sons and daughters. Congratulations. Wow, another inspiring message. Thank you very much. It's my great pleasure to call the president of the Parents Association to the podium, Dr. Maha Abdel Nelson. مبروك طبعا ليكم كلكم ولولادكم قبليكم ان انتوا قررتوا تجيبوا من الجامعه الامريكيه وما اديتوهمش جامعه عين شمس او القاهره زينا يعني بالحقيقه <تصفيق> ارخص كتير قوي بس مش مشكله <تصفيق> انا يعني هحاول ما اخدش وقت قوي لان احنا اوريدي الوقت محدود جدا من الحاجات المهمه جدا اللي عايزه اقول لكم عليها في الجامعه الامريكيه اولا ما فيش بيرنس اسوسيشن في اي حته غير في الجامعه الامريكيه يعني في مصر يعني فده مبدئيا حاجه جديده احنا بنشتغل كليزون او حلقه وصل بينكم وبين الجامعه فانتوا لو احتجتوا اي حاجه احنا لينا مكان هنا لينا تليفون وتقدروا تتواصلوا معانا ولينا صفحه على الفيسبوك ومكان اوريدي على الويب سايت بتاع الجامعه وايميل بنرد عليه يعني بقدر الامكان طبعا وبنحاول ان احنا نكون از ريسبونسيف از بوسيبل احنا مجموعه من الناس فولنتيرز طبعا العمل كله تطوعي احنا ما ما بنستفدش اي حاجه من من الشغل دوت بس زي اي عمل تطوعي في العالم كله احنا يعني اهتمينا ان احنا نحاول نساعد البيرنتس از ماتش از وي كان انا شخصيا قررت ان انا اعمل ده لان انا عانيت جامد جدا مع ابني <تصفيق> فقلت ان انا احاول اخلي البيرنتس تانيين لو اقدر ادي لهم جزء من خبراتي واقدر ان انا اساعدهم انهم يعني دي دونت جو ثرو المشاكل اللي انا وينت ثرو ده هيبقى حاجه كويسه احنا اولادنا في مرحله صعبه جدا اولا مرحله صعبه في العالم كله يعني مش بس في مصر تاني حاجه انه الجامعه الامريكيه مش زي الجامعات الثانيه احنا في انا كنت هندسه القاهره انا فاكره الجدول اللي كان بينزل لنا هو هو اللي كان بينزل من قبلنا ب 25 سنه يعني الجدول ما بيتغيرش يعني الحصه الاولى الحصه الثانيه الحصه الثالثه الموضوع سهل وبسيط وما عندناش اي تشويسز وخلاص يعني هنخش اعدادي ناخد كام الماده وبعد كده مش عارف هنخش سنه اولى نعمل ايه ونص الاولاد بيسقطوا اصلا ويتحولوا فيعني الموضوع بسيط مفهوم اخرته ايه لكن هنا الدنيا صعبه لان التشويسز كتير والى حد كبير مهما كنا ربنا اولادنا بصوره مختلفه ما هماش يعني ويل بريبيرد قوي ان هم يبقوا بياخدوا كل التشويسز بصوره صح ويعني مش عايزه ابقى متحيزه شويه برضه الولاد غير البنات انا عندي ولد يعني فانا عارفه ماساه الولاد فالبنات يعني عارفين سكتهم احسن شويه واشطر كتير يعني بس عموما يعني ناخد بالنا <تصفيق> آه مش مشكله انهم يبقوا مش عارفين هم مش عايزين ايه الناس بتعيش وبتموت وهي مش عارفه هي عايزه ايه مش مشكله ان هم يدخلوا في حاجه ويقرروا انهم يدخلوا في حاجه ثانيه آه ما يتهيأليش ان حد من حضراتكم بيدفع 300000 جنيه في السنه عشان يدخل ابنه جامعه يتعلم لا يعني كنتوا وديتوهم فعلا القاهره ولا عين شمس يعني لا انتوا مدخلينهم فعلا انا هستخدم الاكسبرشن اللي قاله مستر بريزدنت واللي قالته دكتور دينا اللي هو جيرني هم يعني دي رحله هيمروا بيها وهيبقوا سعداء جدا بيها فانتوا حاولوا قدر الامكان تسيبوهم يبقوا سعداء بالرحله دي مش معنى كده تسيبوهم خالص لان يعني برضه هم في في وقت من الاوقات ممكن يعملوا في حاجات هي الخط او الشعره الرفيعه ديت بين ان احنا ما نسيبهمش تماما وفي نفس الوقت ما نخنقهمش. دي اهم حاجه نحاول نقدر نعملها از بيرنتس. احنا كان عندنا بروجكت مهم قوي ووقف شويه دكتور جورج هيساعدنا نكمله ان احنا نعمل زي فيديو صغيره على كل الترمينولوجيز بتاعه الجامعه الامريكيه سبيشالي بالنسبه لكل البيرنتس اللي هم ما همش اصلا اي سيانس. ايه اهميه دروب هاند اد ويك؟ باي ذا احنا ابتدينا دروب هاند اد ويك النهارده فيعني وده اسبوع والاسبوع ده فيري كريتيكال 
ولما الولاد بيعدوا وهم ما بخلصوش يعني تحديد هم هيكملوا في انهي كورسز وهيسيبوا انهي كورسز ده بيعمل لهم مشاكل قدام يعني ايه ادفايزنج؟ يعني ايه ميجر؟ يعني ايه ماينر؟ هل ينفع ياخدوا تو ميجرز ولا لا؟ هل ينفع ياخدوا مش عارف ميجر وماينر ولا ياخدوا ميجر وتو ماينرز؟ الاقي حد من البيرنت جاي بيصوت انا لما ادخلها الجامعه الامريكيه وقررت تخش تدرس ثياتر ثياتر ده كلام فارغي يا جماعه طب ما فريق فابريكا ونسمة محجوب وبتاع ما هم بقوا سيانس يعني هو مش شرط ان احنا نطلع مهندسين ودكاتره ومهندسين ودكاتره قفل بيشيل يعني لكن بالعكس الناس المتميزه مش كتير اسر ياسين ايه وسيان يعني ما بيتهيألي كلنا نتمنى يعني ان احنا اولادنا يبقوا كده يعني آه انا ابني في وقت من الاوقات هو يعني الحقيقه تعثر كثيرا يعني بس في النص كده يقول لي طب انا يعني كان ابتدى يعمل دايفنج طب انا اروح افتح دايفنج سنتر في دهب وبتاع ود يو مايند؟ لا اي دونت مايند اي دونت مايند فعلا يعني المهم ان هو يبقى سكسسفل في حاجه المهم ان هو يبقى سعيد اللي عملوا اريكا اللي عملوا سويفل ما هي دول كلهم انتربرونيرز وكلهم اي سينس وكلهم ما مشيوش في الميجر اللي هم اتخرجوا منه موضوع الميجر ده يعني انا هندسه ما اشتغلش بالهندسه خالص الحقيقه انا متخرجه بقالي 30 سنه ما اشتغلتش بالهندسه يعني انا بشتغل في البيزنس من اول ما اتخرجت لحد دلوقتي والحمد لله اعتقد ان انا سكسسفول كفايه الموضوع ملوش علاقه قوي احنا بندرس ايه احنا فعلا اهم حاجه ان هم الولاد يتعلموا يعيشوا يتعلموا الدنيا ويتعلموا كل التالنتس المختلف سيبوهم يدخلوا كلابس زي ما هم عايزين يعني هيريجستر في فايف كلابس بعد شويه هيرسوا على اثنين ثلاثه يعني هم مش هيقدروا يحضروا كل حاجه حد فيهم عايز يدخل ستودنت يونيون يا ريت يا ريت يتعلم ويعرف يعني ايه الكشنز ويعني ايه كامبين انا ابني دخل الالكشنز بتاعت السنه كنت متاكده انه هيسقط يعني بس يعني مفيش مشكله <تصفيق> خلاص يعني جو ثرو ذا اكسبيرينس اتس ا جود اكسبيرينس ريجاردلس اوف اني ثينج يعني فهو ده اللي بيخلي البني ادمين مختلفين هو ده اللي بيخلي الطالب بتاع دكتور ايهاب بيقول له من امريكا الولاد بتوع الاي يو سي ار ريلي ديفرنت واحنا فعلا بنشوف ده از امبلايرز بقى يعني من الناحيه الثانيه فعلا في فرق في فرق كبير في فرق في الكواليتي بتاعت الستودنتس نفسهم بيتكلموا ازاي بينيجوشيت ازاي يعني انا بتكلم على ابني بيقول ان هو متعثر دراسيا لكن يعني حد يخش يديليت معاه في الفلسفه يعني يعني هي از ديفرنت وهو ده المهم احنا عايزين ديفرنت بيرسوناليتيز عايزين ليدرز عايزين ناس تنقل البلد دي نقله ثانيه ف نسيبهم على قد ما نقدر ونحاول بس نبقى كده بالمونيتور فروم تايم تو تايم هم ماشيين ازاي الكورسز مظبوطه ولا لا لو في اي مشاكل ما فيش يعني ما فيش مانع خالص ان احنا نستبن تو هيلب لكن جاست تو هيلب هم في الاخر دي حياتهم وقراراتهم وباي اون مينز هم مش هيعيشوا لينا ولا هم بيعيشوا الحياه اللي احنا ما نجحناش ان احنا نعيشها ولا بيحققوا احلامنا هما بيحققوا احلامهم هم. واعتقد ان احنا كلنا هدفنا ان هم يبقوا ناس كويسين وسعداء وحاسين ان هم ناجحين فعلا وعاملين اللي هم عايزين بشكركم على الوقت وببارك لكم تاني واحنا دايما موجودين تحت امركم لاي مساعده في اي وقت Thank you very much, Dr. Maha. Uh, our last speaker is actually a group of four uh, students uh, speaking together about their experience. Each one represents a year or phase in the life of an undergraduate student, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. I welcome to the podium the student ambassadors. Freshman year. I have incredible friends, 
I just got declared to my two intended majors, political science and actuarial science, and I have never felt more confident. So what happened in between those two days that led to this incredible transformation? Well, freshman year happened. Being a freshman at AUC opened my eyes to the world and introduced me to what my journey here would look like. I joined four different clubs, entities, and programs on campus. I am currently a student ambassador. I participated in university athletics and I joined the basketball team. I did a professional internship and I did a work study. I gained unmatched experience from doing all of those things while simultaneously working hard academically to maintain my high GPA because eventually I was not going to let anything compromise that. Now imagine how many friends I made from joining co-curricular activities in addition to all the people I worked with in my classes and the wonderful professors I was privileged to meet and learn from. What pulled me out of my shy girl bubble was the massive diversity I found in the community. That's what gives me a sense of belonging here every single day because I know and deal with people from various cultures, countries, and backgrounds of different ages who have different mindsets and interests. Simply, I would not have found that anywhere else outside the gates of AUC, which is why while still a freshman, I know that I made the right decision joining AUC. I'm Zuhair Mukhtar, I'm a sophomore. From my very first day at the university, I knew that I wanted to, to major in biology. And socially, I really didn't care about making any friends or having any connections. Getting high grades was my biggest concern. I thought nothing has to change, but here I am by the end of my sophomore year. I am an actuarial science student, which is completely different <laughs> from biology, and a student ambassador. You might ask, how could I make this dramatic change? And my answer is, is that the variety of courses that I've taken here opened my eyes and I started to consider, consider other career options. For example, I took a statistics class at the end of my freshman year, and since then, I knew that I should declare actuarial science. And when it comes to social life, I have been an introvert since high school, till the end of my freshman year. But then I found what, what makes AUC really different from other universities in Egypt is its social life, the variety of courses and the co-curricular activities that we, I could do. So I decided to get out of my comfort zone. Now I'm a member in Volunteers in Action Club and the Student Ambassador Program. To me, it's impressive how I'm spending one day with children teaching them English and the other day with VIPs discussing with them political and economic issues. Mm -hmm. By the end of my sophomore year, I could say I'm no longer afraid of change. Yet, I'm waiting to see what the upcoming years at AUC are holding for me. Thank you so much. I'm Noor Tobki. I transferred to AUC midway through my junior year from, from, the, from university in the States. During my first two years of university, I took a number of general courses designed to introduce me to a number of different fields. I knew I had to declare before I earned 90 credits, before I was a junior. So I had a flashback back when I was a kid, and I dreamt of being the Egyptian Oprah Winfrey. I decided to be the next best thing, a communication media arts major. Because AUC is the only university in Egypt accredited in the United States and in Egypt, I was able to transfer most of my credits and get involved immediately. I joined a number of clubs and programs such as FYP, first year program, SU, student union, uh, Simon, and UN, and of course, student ambassador. The leadership skills that I started building once I entered AUC will help me become an expert in my field once I become a senior next year. Hello everyone, I am Yed Hamadi, a graduating senior majoring in finance and minoring in economics. Now that I'm approaching graduation, I'm excited to get into the real world. I'm actually also afraid of all the unknown corners in the future, and I'm nostalgic about saying goodbye to AUC, where I have people that became a second family to me. Now that I'm entering the real world, in a matter of months, I realize how much AUC helped prepare me for this challenge. What I will take away with me, more than the uh, courses and academic work that I have, is that in direct lessons that all the staff and uh, uh, faculty here actually give me every day. 
One of the struggles of being a senior is trying to summarize your entire four years of work in one page known to all of us as the resume. In this single page, we are supposed to select the highlights of our life carefully and meticulously. Because this is the page that people, uh, such as like graduate schools or future employers that we are interested in, will actually judge us for. Thank God, here at AUC, we have the Career Center, an, actual, like, an entire entity designed to help and support students make that decision and know exactly how to build that page. I can proudly say that my academic and professional journey through AUC allowed me to study abroad at three different countries other than Egypt, allowed me to join four clubs, participate in six competitions, and work with three different entities on campus. AUC gave me the ability to not only become an expert in my field, but also a well-rounded student and human being. I will be graduating in just a few months, but I'm positive that I have nothing to be afraid of. Thank you so much. This brings us to um, a juncture in our program where I would like to um, point out a card that is inside your folder. This card is uh, where we would like you, please, to write your uh, child's name, and if you know the ID number, your name, your email, and your mobile number. We want to make sure that we have the most recent information for you to contact you. As we've given out, uh, my, I've given some of you my card. If you haven't received my card, I'd be happy to give it to you again. The other thing that I would like to point out to you is this uh, oval card here. We're going to be taking your questions that you would like to ask our panel after I introduce the panel members to you shortly. On this card, please feel free to write any question that comes to your mind that the panel members, the expert panel members, can answer for you. And um, this question, you can write these questions in English or Arabic. Uh, we can, I can read both. Uh, and another uh, product of AUC. And um, we'll be happy uh, to uh, go over them. And you will collect them. We have people in the room to collect them for you. Now I would like to run a video, if we may. This video is called This is AUC, and it is our feature video. I joined the AC simply because it is the only university in Egypt that entitled a person to accomplish more than one thing at once. AAC's liberal arts program is unrivaled. It provides multi-talented students with room to further develop all of their skills, unlike traditional schooling that highlights one particular skill. Additionally, student activities have supplemented my experience by developing efforts of teamwork, commitment, and persistence. As teachers at ABC, you will find all the support that you need, from smart classrooms, to web enhanced teaching and learning, and much, much more. Students will be able to interact and learn not only face-to-face, -face, but also online, locally, and locally. I used to be a professor at Northwestern University in Chicago, USA, and uh, thanks to the ABC support. We managed in the area of biochips to produce many biochips as the ones we see. And, and now they are capable of detecting cancer and, uh, and leukemia and hopefully in the future they can do much, much more. And we can change the whole medical sector. In the area of solar, we developed the first solution in Britain, which can, uh, has the same quality like German inverters, for example, uh, but much cheaper and small solution. And that can help this sector of the solar energy to grow in Egypt uh, in, a, in an organic way. The first time I performed on stage, I was very nervous. AC helped me accomplish my dreams. 
I love to pursue my studies in engineering while being able to dance and practice my passion with the ABC photography. With initiatives such as the first carbon footprint study in the region, energy efficient operations and planning, and sustainability education, AUC leads as the greenest campus in the region. As a student athlete, I learned the value of time management and that I'm not only here in AC to excel in my classroom, but I'm also here to excel in my swimming career. I have access to the facilities over here all day and every day of the week. Since I graduated, I've always been working in high described fields. I've changed fields three or four times in my life. And what enabled me really to be that adaptive and that uh, open to change was the diverse education that I received at the American University. I received a linear kind of education, a very narrow, specialized uh, kind of education. It wouldn't have been easy for me to change fields of, of uh, professions when I, when I graduated. So I owe that to the American University. Remember, you have this card, and you can write any question that you'd like on this card. Uh, next is uh, Dr. Reda Reda uh, Dr. Reda is the Interim Dean of Undergraduate Studies and the Director of the Core Curriculum. Uh, questions that you might want to ask would be, be about the courses that your sons and daughters take in the first year. Next is uh, Maha Gindi. Maha is the executive director of the Career Center. Uh, questions you might want to ask would involve internships, work study, uh, job shadowing, um, uh, looking for jobs, uh, making a resume, uh, getting interview skills, and things like that. Uh, next to her is uh, Noah Sada. Uh, Noha is the Director of Academic Advising. Obviously, advising is particularly in the freshman year is extremely important. While your, student, while your sons and daughters are still undeclared, uh, Noha's office is the place that they should be taking their questions to, um, to guide them through uh, that important period. Next to her is Dr. Alma Morsi. Uh, Dr. Ola is the Senior Director for the Center of Student Well-Being. We have a percentage of students who visit the Center for Student Well-Being. Um, sometimes it's about testing, they're afraid to take exams. Sometimes they're not sleeping well. Um, they may have um, romantic problems. Uh, you never know. But uh, her office is the place where students come and receive support. We have, we have, you know, I mean, kids are kids. Um, uh, next is uh, 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 Coach Bob Riasso. Uh, Bob is the director of athletics. Any questions you may have about sports teams, about the facilities that we have, you could ask uh, Bob. Uh, next to uh, Bob is Shireen Fadali. Shireen is the director of assistant to the registrar. And uh, any questions you would have that would go to the registrar, such as uh, uh, registration, uh, credits, uh, declaration, uh, transcripts, GPA, all those types of things the registrar handles. Transfer as well. Uh, next to Shireen, we have Dr. Suzanne, Suzanne Michel. Suzanne, uh, Suzanne Fouad uh, can answer any questions you may have about uh, medical treatment, the clinic, 
uh, illness, which hopefully we won't have to, actually we hope we don't have to ask this question, but in case medical insurance uh, questions can be asked here. And finally, we have Mr. Yasser Alem. Yasser is the Assistant Director for Planning and Operations in the Office of Residential Life. If your son or daughter is living on campus, uh, or will be living on campus, uh, and you have any questions about the facilities, uh, you can ask them to uh, yes. So at this point, I'm going to ask if there are any questions that you may have. Someone has already sent a question to me, so I'll read it here, and it is to Dalia Dalyareli. If you could please answer this question. And Suel Bil Arabi, Ana Malahatnish Adima Ala al Financial Aid for Spring. Imta Aadar Adim Tani the Sana Al Kaya. بيمسي دوكيمنت 
بيكون متحدد له فيها الجي بي اي اللي لازم يحافظ عليه علشان خاطر يقدر يحافظ على السكولرشيب تاعه. Um, question about changing a major. If my daughter wants to change her major, can she do that? Yeah. Yes, yeah, no. yes. Thank you. Hello and good afternoon everyone and uh, welcome on board the AC family. Uh, from the speeches that uh, we have heard, which was perfect, especially for the students' ambassadors, it was shows too. Students that had eyes biology, she ended up with actuarial science. Students that had eyes a she ended up with double major, and so on. This is one of the beautiful things about AUC. Most of the courses that the students are going to take in their first year can be cha channeled into different they will own boxes. In order to graduate from AUC, you have to fill three boxes: four curriculum, major, and electives. So if they must have started with a major, you can uh, shuffle into the box of elective. So yes. كل التغييرات بعد أول سنة is very easy and sometimes actually wanted لأن الستودنس بيكون اكتشف نفسه أكتر ف please 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 as Dr. Ihan said and all the other speakers and the Maha and everyone leave them خليهم يختاروا leave them to يعني choose whatever major they want it's very important وزي ما Maha تقول later on في دلوقتي أي employer most of the chances will vacancies on the career web, all of them will say AUC graduate. Nobody mentions actually a major. So, of course, there are people who mention a major, but I mean, lots of vacancies are open for AUC graduates, but without mentioning a major. Support your children in the first year. It's very important. It's very important in terms of declaration and getting good grades. It's a transitional year. Support them. Inshallah, they're going to pass successfully. Thank you very much. Uh, here's a question to uh, Dr. Ola. It's a really tough question. <laughs> How do we accommodate students with uh, hearing disabilities? Uh, my son is uh, a few years away from being a university student, but I've been to the States and I was informed that uh, deaf students receive an assistant during lectures. Uh, do we do that here? Um, actually, yes, we have uh, full accommodation for uh, disability, any kind of disability. One of them is hard of hearing. We are very experienced in this kind of disability. We have uh, lots of accommodations to the professors. We always, always, of course, according to the situation of the student and how uh, severe or uh, how dysfunctional the situation is. And accordingly, we choose the best accommodation possible. Sometimes we need note takers, sometimes we need certain accommodations from the professor, sometimes we need like a, a TA with the student, a teaching assistant. We have several types of how to um, really accommodate these students. We're very used to this and uh, let him come here. He will be really served very well and uh, we have a very strong disability accommodation service at AUC. I forgot to tell you, I'm from Morocco, and inshallah, I'll let you know that it's a good time with us. We're really, we're really care for the well-being of students, so hopefully everything will be fine. So for the question, please feel free to come to the office of student well-being. We have a section absolutely dedicated for disability accommodation, and we had lots of hard of hearing before, and they have graduated, and everything is Here's one more question, Dr. Ola. Hal or how is the system to help the ADHD in the Yes, of course, ADHD is one of the major learning disability accommodation service that we offer. We have two types of service here in our office regarding ADHD. Actually, we have. Students with ADHD already have some problems with the time management, with the focusing and so on. So we have uh, one totally uh, separate section just for coaching them for the academics and study skills and time management and all of these things. This is the basic part. But if someone has been diagnosed with ADHD and we, um, he or she had like real assessments proving this condition, we give um, like any international standards accommodation 
for ADHD with typical, for example, longer time in the exams, distraction-free area. Uh, we ask them to, uh, sometimes even they, we, we offer that the students have their exams at our office because we have a dedicated uh, exam area at our office where it is like really distraction-free for ADHD. I remember once we were writing in accommodation uh, for a professor, to a professor of engineering, telling him, try as much as possible not to let the, the examination place be like with a door and a window and lots of distracting things. So the professor came to me and told me like, how, that? how come you? And there must be a window and there must be a door. But, but at our place, like, we, we really know how to handle uh, all the distraction-free areas and we let everything uh, be really accommodating to this kind of disability. Thank you very much. Uh, a question about sports. Can we have an idea, uh, Coach Bob, about sports at the university? How can my son join the basketball team? And are there any privileges if he's already in a first team, I think that means a varsity team, in a well-known club? Okay, hello everyone. I'd like to extend my welcome also to the university. I am new. I came in July and uh, I absolutely love it. We have a great athletic department, uh, and your son uh, can join the basketball team. Matter of fact, tryouts start next week, so they get the opportunity to try out for the team. Uh, is it great to be in a wonderful club? Yes, because you get great education and great coaching, but sooner or later you have to line up and play, and the coach evaluates you, but uh, there's plenty of opportunities in our basketball program. So come on out next week, have your son come out next week, and enjoy our basketball. Great, and one more question. If my child is a professional swimmer, how can AUC support him to balance his academic life with his sports and training requirements, and how can he join the AUC swimming team? Ah, once again, swimming drives for this week, so they can uh, come on out, and we have a beautiful, if you haven't seen our pool, you really gotta see it, it's a fabulous pool. Uh, the, the thing I've always found in college athletics is uh, that during your athletic season, students usually do better academically because they have to budget their time. You know, when they're out of season, they, have, they, feel, they always feel like they have a lot of time to get work done, so they sometimes procrastinate. But when they're in their season and they have to get to practice and they have to eat and they have to sleep, they do much better in, in their academics. So, so please, again, try out some next week. If you haven't seen our pool, you have to see this absolutely fabulous. Thank you very much. Uh, here's a question about transportation. We don't have someone from facilities here, but is there transportation to and from the university for students and how to apply for it? And I can answer that question. If... Yes, sir? Um, good evening, everyone, um, and congratulations again. Uh, yes, there is uh, transportation from and to the university. We serve, as far as I recall, 12 lines uh, ranging between Heliopolis, uh, Giza, Mosul City, Parham, all over Cairo since October. Um, as far as I'm aware, there are uh, subscriptions per semester or per year, and there is a ticketing system. The ticketing system is automated, so the student has his or her ID. They just go to the bus gate, they swap their ID, and they just drive the bus. I'm not quite sure how much is that is the ticket, but it's charged automatically to the student account. So they don't have to pay. It's a paper ride, but they don't have to have cash. It's like a credit card system or something like that. Um, uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, can you also explain um, a student who lives in Cairo uh, and therefore it doesn't qualify for the dorms and then her parents move to another country. What happens in this case? Um, can I read the question again? Yeah, so here's a student who did not apply for the dorms because she was living, she's from Cairo. However, now her situation has changed and her parents have left Egypt. And she doesn't have housing anymore. She doesn't have a home in Cairo anymore. It depends at top which time in the semester this happens. If it's at the beginning of the semester um, and we still have spaces, of course the student can apply. And even throughout the semester, we end up with withdrawals. We, the withdrawal date, uh, the deposit is not refundable. The deposit for the dorms is not refundable. Uh, and the last date to withdraw with, with only the parent before the deposit 
is the third week of classes. So usually by the beginning of the third week of classes, we have a couple of students who withdraw. So we have spaces. We have spaces throughout the semester. So if this extreme case happens even mid-semester, and this actually happened last semester, uh, as we have spaces, we'd be more than happy to accommodate the students. Um, yes, of course, and right now, in the spring, we have spaces for both male and female students. So if this is the case right now, please feel free to pass by my office tomorrow morning, and we'd be more than happy to have. Thank you, Esser. Here is a question about declaration. When and how is declaration done? Uh, that classic question for the parents' meeting. Very, very important as well. Uh, declaration يعني اختيار التخصص. الجامعة عندها لما بتقبل students or when the university accepts students, it accepts them on two modes: either declared students or undeclared. Declared أو student المتخصص بيكون لازم يكون عايز يتخصص في science or engineering majors. Any other major which is a non-science major, لازم student يخص شيء غير متخصص or undeclared. ليه عشان declaration بتكون from within. From within معناه يعني بيكون في set of requirements, some requirements that the student have to pass in order to get declared into the major that they desire. The requirements vary بقى حسب the major that the student is going to, uh, um, to choose. مثلا some majors require a certain set of courses to be passed or taken uh, a certain grades in or something. And an overall GPA, GPA هو النتيجة that the students بيخدوها في آخر كل semester in order to declare into a major. Others be a portfolio, others be a interview, and so on and so forth. So declaration is a tahastus, and students get tahastus for a major detail, and it happens almost after the first year of their study. But another classic question that almost follows this, in no, had the first year of Adam tahastus that are more being undeclared, be a good moment outside, any, that add to the years of that they have to stay in AC? The question, the answer is no. So if a student, for example, is undeclared, intending mechanical engineering, they take almost the same courses as a student who declared in mechanical engineering. So no years are lost in this process. It's designed that way. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. You answered the next question that I was going to ask you. <laughs> because you knew everyone asked this question. Um, what are some of the different co-curricular clubs that are available? I think I'll have to answer that question. <laughs> so, so let's say your son or daughter wants to do something outside the class. It could be a sport, or it could be something uh, like the vice president mentioned, uh, running for student government or joining a club. Uh, you heard the four students who spoke. They talked about all the different things they've done outside of class. We have clubs that focus on the community, that provide services to the community. Some of them teach English. Some of them work with orphans. Others work with uh, in areas that uh, are economically underprivileged. We have clubs that focus on journalism, on magazines, newspapers, websites, and so forth. We also have clubs that focus on conferences, doing, for example, uh, Model United Nations, um, the Model uh, Arab League. We have clubs that focus on um, culture, such as the Theater and Film Club, Musicana, we have a folklore program, we do dance, we do many, many things. So there are a lot of things that your uh, sons and daughters can get interested in. And many of the disciplines, many of the, many of the departments have their own student associations. Students can become involved in specifically in projects that are done in the departments if they want to do robotics, if they want to do astronomy, if they want to do finance and economics, they can focus on activities in those fields. Some students like to stay closer to the, to the major. So that answers that question. Uh, a question for Dr. Suzanne, it's about the medical insurance. 
Can you please brief about what health insurance includes and does not include? <laughs> احنا معانا شركة جلوب ميد بتغطي الانشورنس بتاع الطلبة وكان بداية السنة اللي فاتت كانت السيلينج 50000 السنة دي وصلنا ل 100000 والميديكال انشورنس احنا اولا العيادة بتشتغل 24 ساعة 7 دايز في عندنا emergency team في عندنا ambulance في عندنا كل التخصصات موجودة الستاف بيبقى الأول لغاية الساعة 4 وبعد الساعة 4 لغاية تاني يوم الصبح بيبقى الإمرجنسي موجود دكتور والتو نيرسز والأكسس بتاعت الإمرجنسي موجودة هتلاقوها في البروشور مع حضراتكم أي طالب بيتعب أو بيحتاج أي حاجة من الكلينك بيشرفنا وإحنا بعد كده بنبعته لمستشفيات وحاجات والسكانز واللابس وكل حاجة بتغطيها جلوب ميت ومعانا حد من جلوب ميت برضه هيقول لنا حاجات بريف للتغطية بتاعة جلوب ميت الطلبة بيجوا العيادة بياخدوا بيكشفوا وبياخدوا الريفيرال لأي مستشفى تبع جلوب ميت وبياخدوا الأدوية برضه تبع الأوكمات وكل حاجة بيعوزوها وفي بري ميديكال بشيكة قبل السبورتس برضو تتغطى كل حاجة هما بيعوزوها احنا اكسس في أي وقت بالنسبة للطلبة اللي هم عندهم كرونيك ديزيز احنا كمان بنحب الانفيرنس او يخلوهم يجوا يسجلوا الحالات بتاعتهم ان كيس لو حد عنده دايبيتس عنده هايبرتنشن عنده اي كرونيك ديزيز بيجي بيسجل عشان بيبقى اسمه موجود عندنا ان كيس لو هو دخل العياده في اي وقت او طلب الهيلث في اي وقت بنقدمه. الادويه برضه بالنسبه للادويه في اللي هي الستاف ما بتبقاش متغطيه يمكن هي دي الحاجه الوحيده اللي ما بتبقاش كفر ودي كل الميديكال انشورنس في اي مكان بتبقى مكفر. في حاجه كمان بس عايزه تبقى صغيره احنا عندنا نوعين عشان استخدم الميديكال انشورنس. يا بالدايركت فيلنج يعني انا معايا الكارت على طول هروح اصرف الحاجه واروح استخدمها مني لنفسي مش محتاجه ريفيرال لازم ان انا اتحرك بيه لان انا دايركت الكارت بروح اكشف واروح استخدم الخدمه او ان انا دفعت الحاجه بره وعايزه استرد الخدمه عندنا يعني برضه استبدال يعني انا لو ستودنت اظن صيدليه سيف اللي هنا صح لو صيدليه سيف احنا صيدليه سيف دلوقتي بقت النتورك بس السنه اللي فاتت ما كانتش معايا كان اي ستودنت بيدفع هنا بيترد له الفلوس بعد كده بقى بالريمبرسمنت لكن دلوقتي سيف معايا يعني احنا عندنا فارماسي لوكيتد في الكلينك نفسها دلوقتي او من زمان بس هم ما كانوش متعاقدين معاه لكن السنه دي اتعاقدوا معاه فبقت على طول الطالب سواء موجود عندنا في العياده او بره الجامعه وهيصرف حاجه من بره اوكي عايز يصرفها من عندنا من العياده هيصرفها برضه من العياده. After 8 p.m. Uh, at 8 p.m. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be uh, mixing to ask other questions. Uh, about medical insurance and so forth, you'll have the opportunity. I wanted just to uh, give um, a question to uh, Dr. Reda. Uh, this is a very broad question. What is the meaning of liberal arts? is an approach that focuses on skills of the mind rather than subject matter. So while at AUC we have um, each student majors in a particular field, uh, a third of the time that they spend here at AUC is in academic subjects that are outside their field of major. Uh, this is intentionally designed, it's a curriculum of structured courses that develop particular learning skills that are um, designed to develop critical thinking, um, communication, critical reading, analysis and evaluation, teamwork, citizenship, 
uh, skills that are um, not specific to a particular major and they are transferable and the purpose of this is to ensure that our students are not um, boxed in, in, in a particular way of thinking or paradigm. So the focus of these courses, while they are uh, themed and they do have content, is to develop and assess thinking skills that the students can use to uh, problem solve and make themselves transferable. Uh, this is what the liberal arts teaches. Um, the liberal arts also hopes to develop identity. So student, it uses particular teaching approaches uh, that focus on individual student needs. And it, it tailors learning to um, particular uh, what, what the students, uh, how they learn, their learning styles. It uses uh, uh, methods that we call high impact teaching practices to make sure to integrate um, uh, all of the skills that they need in uh, lifelike and real world applications so that uh, their studies are not removed from the real world. There, I, I'm not, there isn't a word in Arabic um, uh, that I don't think describes uh, the liberal arts. It's, it's not liberal and it's not arts. It's not <laughs> liberal arts. Thank you. Here's a question for the Career Center. It says, How to save Gamma El Khrigin Fi Dahat Pursit Tamal Bada Tahabuk? ربنا السؤال نعم احنا بنساعد الاولاد ان هم يلاقوا فرص عمل بعد التخرج لكن احنا هي انا عايزه اركز انه احنا بنساعدهم ازاي يلاقوا فرصة العمل مش احنا اللي بنحطهم فرصة عمل يعني الفكرة ان احنا بنبتدي من من مع الاولاد من اول سنة واحب ان انتم تشجعوهم ان هم يزوروا كريج سنتر علشان يبتدوا احنا بنعمل حاجة اللي اسمها كاريت لاننج سايكل كاريت لاننج سايكل احنا بنركز في الاول ان ساعدهم يتعرفوا على نفسهم بمعنى ان هم يبتدوا يركزوا ايه المهارات اللي عندهم ايه المجال الاهتمام اللي عندهم بنتكلم على البرسوناليتي برافرنسز بتاعتهم وده بيتم من خلال سايكوباتريك تاستين بيتعامل علشان يساعدهم يفهموا او يأكدوا على ايه القدرات اللي عندهم وبعدين بندخل على مرحلة الكارير اكسبلوريشن كارير اكسبلوريشن ان احنا بنحاول نخليهم ياخدوا معلومات عن سوق العمل وعن المجالات المختلفة عن طريق الدايركت كونتاكت مع الشركات ومع الامبلويرز فمثلا اخر الشهر ده اخر فبراير 7 يوم الاربعاء 27 فبراير سوري 27 فبراير الشهر القادم عندنا حاجه اسمها كاريت دي كاريت دي ده بيبقى يوم كامل من حوالي 11 ونص ل 3 ونص بيبقى عندنا فوق ال 50 بروفيشنال موجودين في رام تيبلز ان هم الطلبه بتروح بتتكلم معاهم فريلي هو مش عشان يدور على شغل ولا اي حاجه بس هو بيتكلم مع كل متخصص في مجال عمله واحد في مجال تسويق واحد في مجال هندسه واحد في مجال فاينانس ان سو اون ان هو بيتكلم عن انت بتعمل ايه في مجال عملك طب انت ايه السكيلز المطلوبه في مجال العمل ده طيب ازاي اقدر انمي نفسي في الكلام ده بحيث ان هو لو في حاجات ناقصه بتساعده ان هو كمان يعمل بلاننج ان هو يبتدي يفكر طب ايه الكورسز الريليفنت اللي لازم اخدها؟ ايه السكيلز اللي ممكن اطورها؟ ايضا بنركز على الورك ستادي بروجرام، الورك ستادي بروجرام الجامعه مخصصه مبلغ مالي يكفر ان الطلبه ممكن تشتغل في الديبارتمنتس في اثناء الدراسه ده بيقدر يعمل بجانب دراسته، الهدف من ده انه الطالب بيبتدي يتعلم يتعلم زي ياخد مسؤولية يبقى عنده زملاء عنده رئيس بيرفورت له 
و يبتدي يعمل سام كايند اوف هاندز اون اكسبيرينس يبتدي ده من اول فريشمان ممكن يقدمه على البروجرام ده فهنا هو بيشتغل جنب الدراسه ففيها نوع من كمان ان هو بياخد فاينانشال برضه ريفينيو يعني هو بسيط صحيح لكن هم من حقهم يشتغلوا في اثناء السمستر لغايه 120 ساعه والساعه على حسب نوع العمل بتتراوح ما بين 30 جنيه او 45 جنيه في الساعه فذات الورك ستادي الجوب شادوينج ده انذر بروجرام ان هو بيقدر يعملوا انتر اكشن دايركتلي مع الامبلويرز انه يعني احنا في اثناء السنه بيبقى في اناونسمنتس على حاجه اسمها كارير ويب كارير ويب ده اتس ان اونلاين سيستم لازم كل طالب يسجل عليها انه كل فرص العمل من جوب شادوينج لانترنشيبس فول تايم جوبز بتبقى موجوده عليها فبالتالي بيقدروا ان هم يجوين يوم بيقدر مثلا لو عايز يعرف اكتر عن مجال البنوك فيقدر يروح زياره لبنك يقعد مع بروفيشنال يتكلم معاه يشوف مجال البنوك بيعملوا ايه بالظبط يسال اسئله دايركتلي فبيشوف مش بس بقى زي الكارير دي هو بيتقابل يتكلم مع بروفيشنال جوه الجامعه لا هو بيروح لمجال العمل واحنا بنعمل كولابوريشن مع الديفرنت فاكولتي في مجالات مختلفه علشان الجامعه بتركز على جزئيه الاكسبيرينشال ليرنينج ان انا مش بس بتعلم جوه الكلاس بس انا بدمج الثيوري في البراكتس فبنتعاون مع الفاكولتي انه في بنعمل كلاس فيزيتس لمكان العمل او بيبقى في كيس ستاديز بيجي بروفيشنالز من الشركات يدوا الكيسز جوه الكلاس والطلبه بتبتدي تعمل دراسه وبيقدموا زي زي كومبيتيشن يعني ويجي بيزور بعد كده برده مكان العمل عشان يلم داتا وبعد كده البروفيشنالز بيجوا تاني في الكلاس عشان الطلبه تقدم الكيسز او الدراسات بتاعتها وبيلاقوا وينر يعني بس الهول بوينت از ان انا بحاول ادمج الحياه الحاجات اللي بيدرسوها بالكلاس في الحياه العمليه. الحاجه الثانيه اللي بتتم برضو انه الستودنتس من اول الفريشمان يير يقدروا يشتركوا فيها وات وي كول تشالنجز اند كومبيتيشنز. احنا بن بن يعني عندنا امبلوير بارتنرز كثيره جدا احنا يعني عندنا اكتف مع اراوند 750 امبلويرز في السنه وفي ناس منهم بيعملوا تشالنجز والطلبه بتشترك في التشالنجز دي وبيشتغلوا عليها بجد. وبيقدموا دراسات في الاخر ويبقى فيها كومبيتيشنز ناس وينرز ويا اما بتبقى جوائز يعني اما هو مثلا وصل لمرحله الناشونال وكسب فبيروح للريجنال كومبيتيشن وبعد كده بيروح للورد وايد كومبيتيشن ولجنا عاده بيبقوا وينرز في يعني فيرست اور سكند يعني في بيبسيكو تشالنج في يونيليفر كويست في يعني في اسامي كتير على يعني اخر تشالنج اكشلي عملناه ولذيذ جدا انا شايفه جزء منها ان احنا بنحاول ندمجهم في المجتمع حاجه اسمها الاي يو سي تعمير تشالنج ووتر تاور حضرتك لو بتشوفوا هنا الووتر تاور اللي جنب الجامعه ده هو يعني ما فيش عليه اي ديزاينز فاحنا في الكومبيتيشن ان الطلبه من مجالات مختلفه بزنس على اركيتكتشر على ارت اتعمل كومبيتيشن ان هم هيعملوا ديزاين بحيث انه ان شاء الله يمكن على الصيف هتشوفوا الديزاين على الووتر تاور ده والوينرز في منهم هيروح بيروت يشوف الناس اللي عملت كده قبل كده وفي منهم هياخدوا مهما هناك فالهدف انا بمنشن كل الكلام ده ليه؟ انه الخبرات المختلفه دي بتساعد ان هم يثقلوا عايزين يعملوا بعد كده احنا بنقول يور ميجر داز نوت ديكتيت يور كارير وزي ما فايس بريزنت دينا قالت ودكتور ايهاب والبريزنت انه احنا بنركز ان هو يقدر يطبق اللي اتعلمه في مجالات مختلفه فهنا هو وي دونت تيتش ذيم وي دونت جيف ذيم ا فيش بات وي تيتش ذيم هاو تو فيش فهنرجع لموضوع الشغل وعشان سوري اسفه للاطاله احنا بنساعدهم ان هم يستعدوا بالريزيميز وزي يعملوا انترفيوز اند اول ذات فعندنا تو امبلويمنت فيرز بير يير فكل سنه في نوفمبر وفي مايو السنه دي بس عشان رمضان كل سنه طيبين هنعمله في ابريل بيبقى في امبلويمنت فير في اكثر من 75 ل 85 شركه بيوفروا فرص العمل وفرص الانترنشيبس والانترنشيب ده برنامج بيتعمل في الشتاء وفي الصيف عشان الطلبه تشتغل في الاجازات وتقدر تبقى واخده اكسبيرينس غير كده الكارير ويب اللي هي الاونلاين سيستم ده دايمنشن 
عليها جوبز بتتحط يوميا فالطلبه بتقدر تقدم 24/7 عليها احنا سنويا بنجنريت اراوند 1600 انترنشيبس و8000 فرصه عمل للطلبه اللي هم بيتخرجوا زائد احنا السيرفيسز بتاعتنا متاحه للخريجين فور لايف يعني واحد متخرج من 10 سنين 15 سنه ستيل ممكن بيرجع وياخد السيرفيس وكل حاجه ويقدر يميت ادفايزر ويعمل كارير بلاننج اند سوري اسفه كنا طرفه عليك Thank you very much. Uh, there's a question here about the orientation for students. This is the last question. And the question is, uh, my daughter missed the three-day orientation. What can she do now? Uh, so, orientation. Uh, فاحنا عارفين قد ايه ده مهم فاحنا عملنا امتحان للطلبه اللي ما عرفوش يحضروا الثلاث ايام. الامتحان ده بيبقى عباره عن مولتيبل تشويس كويستشنز يعني بعد بس احنا مش هنخلي الطالب الامتحان على طول عشان عارفين ان هو طبعا ما لحقش ان هو يدرس المواد اللي احنا حضرناها. عملنا زي دليل فكل طالب ما حضرش يقدر ياخد نسخه من الدليل والاستاذ احمد زين موجود وهو اللي ماسك الاورينتيشن وماسك الاف واي بي فاحنا طبعا احنا عارفين الطلبه اللي ما حضروش الاورينتيشن لانه احنا بناخد بالتليفون بنعمل كيو ار كود لكل طالب يحضر الاورينتيشن يوميا في كل سيشن فاحنا عارفين الطلبه اللي احنا لازم نعمل فولو اب مباشر معاهم على طول واحنا هنتصل بيهم او نكلمهم باي يعني مثلا نجيبهم في الكلاسز او بالتليفون واحنا هنوفر لهم دليل الدليل ده هيذاكروا فيه وبعد ما يطمنوا ان هم خلاص يستووا المعلومات وبعدين في طلبه مستعدين يساعدوهم اللي هم في الفاشون الاف واي بي احنا بنعمل لهم امتحان وان شاء الله هينجحوا في الامتحان يجيبوا 70% من الامتحان ده وخلاص. فده ال كويس ان انا عرفت قلت له جايب كل ده بالعربي. ثانك يو فيري ماتش اجين اند بليز هيلب يور سيلفز تو ذا فود اند بيفرجز.